I got cheated on and I apologized because he cheated on me. Let's talk about it. So I was dating this guy. He's exactly six years older than me. And yes, this is the same guy that stole $4,000 from me. Just a little backstory if you haven't seen my previous story times. This guy stalked me for about three months. And he was like a very jealous person. Like I used to work at a restaurant and he would be jealous of my coworkers. Fast forward, it was Christmas. We were supposed to spend some time together, but he was like, oh no, I have to go spend time with my aunt. I always spend um, Christmas with her because her husband died and she's very lonely, blah, blah, blah. It was Christmas day and he decided he was gonna bring my Christmas gift to my job. So he went to the restaurant, gave me my Christmas gift and was like, I'll see you tomorrow. So after my 12 hour shift at the restaurant, I go home and I'm like, okay, well, let me just, you know, go to bed because I'm not gonna see anyone. Well, it was two o'clock in the morning. Mind you, I had to go to work the next day because yes, I worked at a restaurant and I worked all the time. It was two o'clock in the morning and he's like, hey, I'm outside, can you open the door? Pause, I lived with two other roommates and my roommate's bedroom was literally right next to her because I could hear her with her boyfriend when she was having, you know, doing the dirty. So he comes inside, he's like, oh, I'm gonna take a shower. I haven't showered since 12 in the afternoon. And I'm like, okay, I go back to bed. I wanna say like maybe half an hour after he got there and he was like already sleeping. Like he took a shower, he was sleeping. His phone is like going off, like text message, text message, text message. The text messages said, hey, thank you so much for the gifts that you got um, my kids. They really liked it. I'm getting ready to go to work now. I love you so much and thanks for giving me my Christmas gift as well. With a little plant emoji, you know that little eggplant emoji? Yeah. So me being who I am, I answered back and I'm like, this is his girlfriend. Um, He's sleeping right now and who are you? And she, she didn't believe me. Like she was like, oh, let's call him Dennis. Oh, Dennis, please stop joking around with me. I have to go to the hospital right now. She was like an RN, a nurse. And um, I have to go to the hospital right now and I'm not up for your games. And we just kept going back and forth because I I was like in shock. She's like, please stop joking around with me, blah, blah, Let me know when you're coming home next. I'm like, coming home? Does he live with you? But I know he didn't live with her because he has his own house. So I decided to wake him up because at this point I was so pissed and I'm like, who is this girl that's texting you? Because you said that you couldn't spend time with me today Christmas because you were at your aunt's house, but you were actually bringing her kids gifts. This guy threw a whole tantrum, like literally like a five-year-old, like you took a fucking lollipop from a five-year-old. So he starts like getting super loud and I'm like, I need you to calm down because I live with roommates and it's three o'clock in the morning and you're yelling. And he's like, talk to me like that again and I'm gonna call the cops. And I'm like, what? Like, I was so confused. And I'm like, but tell me who she is. Like, I need to know who she is. Like, are you, do you wanna be in another relationship? Like, we can just break up right now. Like, I really don't care. I really don't care. He immediately unlocked his phone and called the cops on me at my own apartment. So he's on the phone with the cops, with the operator, and he's saying that I won't let him leave, like that I'm holding him hostage in my apartment. And I'm like, that is so not true, like trying to like, you know, let the operator know that that's like not true. And it was a woman and I know she had my back because no cops came. He decided he wanted to smash his little phone. So he left my house, smashed his phone right in front of my house, left it there because next day I saw it there. Around lunchtime, he called me and he's like, I really need you to apologize for going through my phone and seeing messages that you have no business seeing. So I apologized for going through his phone. I proceeded to stay with him until February of the following year. Before anyone comes for me, I was very lonely. I had no family close to me. I had just moved from Dominican Republic to here and again, literally had no one. This is a story time of the actual worst job I ever had in my entire life. And I've had 20 jobs, so that's saying something. When I get into it, you're gonna be like, is that even legal? And I'm gonna be like, 
I actually know it's probably not. I was 19. I moved out to the neighboring city from me to like pursue makeup. And this was called Syracuse. Syracuse, New York. The land of the brave, that's for sure. I got out there. I needed a job right away. Like I needed to pay rent. Like I needed to get a job. So I was finding jobs everywhere. I was searching everywhere for a job and I couldn't really find anything. And then I came across this ad for like a Verizon employee. I'm pretty sure it was on Indeed. And it basically said like 16 an hour for like sales and i was like okay yeah, i can do that my dumb ass thought i was going to be selling phones and i was like okay per like i can sell a phone i apply and i get called back for this interview and the person on the other line is like oh yeah like come out to this part of syracuse and we'll do an interview and i'm thinking like i'm going to the verizon store duh that's what you'd think this is definitely not my color when i spray tan but whatever mind you like i needed this job i had no other option i had to get something and i had to get in quick so i go to go for this interview and i put it in my maps because obviously i don't know my way around and i pull up to the verizon wireless and i'm like i'm here because he told me to like let him know when I was there which was weird to me I'm like what the fuck guys like come across the street to the Dunkin we'll do the interview here in my brain I'm like what this doesn't even make sense like why am I going to a Dunkin Donuts the guy basically tells me he's like oh we don't work at the Verizon store we're like sales people that work outside of Verizon so like we'll go to stores and events and try to sell Verizon and I'm like whatever like I just need this job so I don't even care so I just basically I'm like yeah sounds great sounds like so much fun well, the story he was being very misleading and we actually sold Verizon files cable out of Walmart. And mind you, I thought I was going to be like selling phone plans. That's exactly how he made it seem. And the whole time I'm selling cable inside of Walmart. I'm not too proud to work any type of job. Like if I need money, I'm going to work the job. So I was like, fine, I'll do this until I can find a job at like a Mac or something like that. When I tell you this job was so humiliating, like you would stand in Walmart and walk up to strangers and be like, who do you have for your cable company? And people would be just cursing me out all day. Like I'm trying to shop, like get the out of my face. Like what? I literally was terrified of every day of work. So I started clocking in and saying I was at work when I actually wasn't because fuck you. Like you didn't even tell me this is what I was going to be doing. Dude, this was like a subcontracting business that this guy had had just started and he was hiring me to earn commission but instead of paying me my commission he was paying me hourly of 875 and then if we hit like a quota we would get paid some commission but like not all of it because we didn't even have a home office so we would do all our meetings like at a duncan but one day he finally got us a home office there was like four employees and everyone was so weird i was the only girl so i got like very weird comments all the time dude this manager of mine is like 55 and i don't understand how any of this works yet so i'm thinking nothing of anything still and every time i worked with him he would tell me how i'm fat and i'm ugly and like make it seem like he's trying to be funny but just blatantly calling me fat and ugly mind you this man is bald 4'11 and has a hernia in his stomach the size of planet earth anyways one day they call a meeting and they're like come to the new home office like we got an office yay me being fucking dumb i drive to this office that's on the other side of the city and pull up to this meeting of like six people that we have on the team and mind you i am the only girls so i'm always just ready for the weird comments I'm a very blunt person so i can really give it back especially with men because like i don't respect you okay like i respect everyone as long as they respect me but these men did not respect me or my personal space I get to the meeting and they sent me the wrong address so i'm like what the hell what is going on i pull up to a public library they sent me the wrong address on purpose because they wanted to have a little pre-meeting about me and then go into a meeting with me and tell me the right address but they wanted me to be in the neighborhood so i could get there quick you know whatever i get to the meeting and i'm thinking nothing of it they're all already inside and i'm thinking nothing of it because I'm dense apparently and I get inside and immediately the meeting is just like calling me fat and ugly we're in this like weird upstairs office area above like a business and it's so creepy and weird I'm just like where am I start the meeting that they'd already had and they're basically saying that I'm not selling enough and then start making fun of me and saying like of course you're not selling because you're a woman which these jokes were like all the time like oh you can't sell because you're a woman like people don't trust women why would they trust women trust this man as far as I could throw him and I couldn't throw him very far considering he was a four foot eleven dense ass old man. I already know why I'm not selling enough. It's because I'm not actually at the store, babe. I'm not walking up to strangers while they're getting freaking paper towels and asking them where they have their cable at. I'm only here until I can find a better job, clearly. So I'm just kind of playing it off like, yeah, like I really need to up my sales tactics. Like tell me how to like conquer objections. Their objections are that the freaking cable is a million dollars and they already have spectrum. So get out of my face. So the meeting takes a literal giant left turn and they start just basically railing on me that I'm fat and ugly and making fun of how I like fix my bra straps and like making fun of how I talk. I have one friend at this entire job that I have and his name was Owen. Love him. Bless his heart. And he's defending me. He's like, yeah, maybe we should stop talking about this. Like maybe this is rude. Like maybe stop. Mind you, this man has his two four-year-old twin boys in the room and they're straight up beating each other up. The chaos in the room is like unfathomable. I wish I could like put my brain on screen. I just stand up and I'm like, actually I quit and I want you to send me the commission because I read the contract and you legally have to send me my commission. And I leave and I'm basically just counting on the fact that they're not trying to get sued so they're going to send me the commission. 
basically decided like I'd rather go broke than keep humiliating myself and feeling like I'm being harassed daily by this old ass man. Like I'm just gonna quit. Luckily I ended up getting a job that was like amazing. I was a counter manager at Laura Mercier in my area. So that was like amazing, but they still owed me $400 and I have rent to pay. So <laughs> I text this old man and I'm like, hey, you owe me $400. Like, please send that over to me. And he's basically like, um, no, I'm not sending it to you. And I start blowing up his phone. I'm persistent and I like to stir the pot. So I'm like, if you don't actually send this to me, I will be suing you. I wasn't playing. Like you're giving me my money. I literally don't care if it's $10 or a hundred billion. You're sending me my money. He ends up calling me and says to me, since you want to be a little bitch about 400 measly dollars, I'm going to send it to you and then I never want to hear from you again. Perfect, babe. Send me the money. I was never planning to talk to you again. Then I worked one of my favorite jobs I ever worked, which was Laura Mercier, and I was happy as a clam. Turns out that company got sued and they no longer exist. Story time. I cheated because I thought my husband cheated. He left and has not said a single word. I, 28 female, have been with my husband, 33 male, for over six years. We've been married for four and have a 20-month-old son together. We met through friends at a house party and connected almost immediately. We started dating a few days after that, and the more time we spent together, the more I started to fall for him. I always had the feeling of him being out of my leg, but he never made me feel that way. After two years, we ended up getting married. We tried for a child and got a beautiful son. I always loved my husband more than anyone can imagine, but after giving birth, I gained a bit of weight. He always told me that he didn't care, that he loved me no matter what. He suggested I could start training with him at the gym. He goes four or five times a week, and that we could start this as an activity together. I said yes, but we never ended up going together for several different reasons. As time moved on and the baby started taking up more of our time, our sex life became less and less, but he always assured me that he was still attracted to me. Most of the time, he would try to initiate, but I would turn him down, mostly because of myself and because I was insecure about my body. This is still a huge regret for me. He even told me we could leave the baby at our parents' house to get alone time, but for some reason, I kept neglecting him. My self-esteem became worse and worse, and he tried to cheer me up and encourage me. When we would go out somewhere, I could see other women looking at him or keep trying to make eye contact with him and it would bother me. One day he came home from work and he went straight to bed telling me he was exhausted. I started looking through his phone. I started looking at his phone and looking at his Instagram. I could see several chats from different women. He's been asked to go meet up for coffee or they could just meet up as friends. He always turned them down. I even saw an archived message from an ex who had messaged him out of the blue and asked if he wanted to meet up for a good time. I really don't know why, but my head started making up that he must be cheating on me with at least one of these girls. I ended up contacting an ex who I hadn't talked to in years. One thing led to another and we met at a hotel close by. At first, I just wanted some sort of payback, but we ended up having sex and I was filled with incredible regret. All of this happened during the day and my husband was at work and had no idea and never had a suspicion. It took me three days and he came home one day. We were in front of a television. I started crying and told him everything. He just kept looking at me, didn't say a single word, went upstairs, locked the door to our bedroom. I followed him and I was crying at the door, but he didn't say a single word to me. When he finally came out, he immediately left the house. I haven't heard a single word from him. I have tried to call him at least a hundred times, but he still hasn't responded and I have no idea where he is. All of this happened yesterday and I haven't heard a word from him. I'm scared of contacting his or my family because I don't want them to find out. I'm filled with regret and disgust and I don't even know why I didn't trust him. I know most of it roots down to my own insecurities, but I just want my husband back. He left me alone with our baby. What can I do to save my marriage? Okay, here is why I'm not into athletes specifically baseball players <laughs> okay this is like two years ago this baseball player slid in my dms i didn't know you weren't supposed to date baseball players yet so shut up we start talking i really liked him right away and already i was like mom dad get ready for christmas because i'm bringing someone home we hadn't met yet because he did live in iowa but i was even down to go to iowa honestly like the christmas plans could come later right okay but it was time for us to meet so he bought me a plane ticket to iowa and i went to iowa i fully went to iowa to meet this guy. I always forget that I did that. Then I'm in Iowa, I get off the plane, I'm like, where do I go? He told me to meet him at his baseball game. That was gonna be my first time meeting him. So I go, I show up, and he's playing. I don't know if he's good or not because I don't know things like that because I don't know sports, okay? That's irrelevant to the story. Anyways, whatever, I like him, he's nice. We spend the weekend together in Iowa. I get home and I'm like, I have a boyfriend now, everyone. <laughs> Can't even relate to being single, never even heard of it. Don't even know what that is like. So I get home and I tell all my friends about him and they are like, mm, so many red flags, so many red flags here that we don't even know where to start. And I was like, like what? <laughs> They're like, uh, first of all, he's a baseball player. They're literally players. I was like, okay, well, you don't know him or the relationship that we have, Jesse. And she was like, okay, then why do he fly you out so fast? Why do he do that? And I was like, because uh, he really, really likes me a lot, lot, lot. <laughs> Would you not know anything about that, Jesse? 
Fast forward to a couple months later, I go out in Nashville and I meet this girl and I really, really liked her. So I went to follow her on Instagram. I saw that baseball man follows this girl too. And I was like, oh my God, how do you know Tanner? And she's like, oh my God, actually it's so weird. We used to talk and he flew me out to Iowa. <laughs> but uh, how do you know him? I was like, he flew you there to Iowa? Okay, okay, um, me too. <laughs> when did he do that? When did he fly you to that crazy state, Iowa? <laughs> she's like, oh my God, I don't even know. I think like May, like the end of May. I was like, mm, me too. <laughs> uh, do you know what date? <laughs> I made her get out her calendar and look. Turns out she was there from May 25th to May 28th. She was like, but it's so crazy. He like ghosted me right after and I never really heard from him again and I don't know why. And I was like, so I might know why. If we'll look closely at the date on this, I landed in Iowa on May 28th. <laughs> Which means I got there the day she left. The day she left is when I got there. So we took this picture together and sent it to him. Shout out to you, Tanner, and all of Iowa. <laughs> Hope you're all doing well. I'm never going back. So, yeah. Gamers of Reddit, what are the strangest things you've heard over an open mic? Playing with Pug and Destiny, we had just finished a raid and we were taking a 15-minute smoke break before jumping into the next one. It was winter and one of the guys had stepped outside for a quick smoke and still had his headset on. A few minutes into the break, we hear an oh crap, then the sound of someone banging on doors and windows as he tried to get back inside his house. Apparently, he has locked himself out and didn't have a way back in. Realizing he still had his headset, he put his earphones back on and was like, Guys, I need help. I'm locked out of my house without a jacket and I don't have my phone. I asked if there was anyone that I could call. Dude couldn't recall his mother, dad, sister, etc.'s phone numbers off the top of his head. I asked where he lived and started to pull up the non-emergency police contact for his area. Then he had a bright idea. Dude, call the Arby's in State X, Town X, off Z Road and ask for Sarah. That's my sister. Tell her to call my mom so she can bring the spare set of keys over. So that's what I did. I called, and she was the one to actually answer the phone. Phone is answered, me. Hey, is the assistant manager named Sarah there? Her. Yeah, that's me. What can I do for you? Me. This is a bit odd, but I'm playing an online game with your brother Andrew. He stepped out for a smoke and locked himself out without a jacket. He doesn't have his phone, so he told me to call you so you could call your mom to see if she can bring the spare keys over. Her. Oh, no. Yeah, I can do that. Are you one of my brother's friends? Me. Nope. Just met him online today. I live about 1,500 miles from your location. Her. Oh, okay, well, thanks for calling and letting me know. I'll call my mom and let her know. We say bye and phone call ends. About five minutes later, I get a call from the same area code, different number though, and it's dude's mom in a slight panic, asking if her son was okay and having me let him know she was on her way right now. I played operator for about 20 minutes until she got to his place. One of the most interesting online gaming moments for me. My husband got jealous over the girl he led on for years at our wedding. I, 25 female, got married to my husband, 24 male. We'll call him Jim. A week ago, after dating for two and a half years. Jim has a friend called Misha, 22 female, who was invited to the wedding. He and Misha have known each other since high school and were close friends, and Misha had a very obvious crush on Jim from what he and others who know them have told me. Jim told me this after I met Misha for the first time and confessed that he leaned into her crush and led her on throughout their high school years. For a little while after, before we got together because he was struggling with his mental health and he really liked her attention. He seemed genuinely guilty about all of this because he thought Misha was a nice girl and a good friend. And because he showed guilt, I didn't feel the need to bring it up or argue and despite thinking it was a shitty thing to do. Plus, Misha's a nice girl who has never overstepped boundaries and has been nothing but kind and friendly towards me. Now I consider her a friend too. Misha moved away to the city last year and has done really well for herself and has a long-term boyfriend who none of us have met yet, so when it comes to sending wedding invites, I told her she was welcome to bring him as a plus one. The first red flag came when Jim was weirdly resistant to the idea of Misha bringing her boyfriend, but he excused it on being concerned about the number of guests we invited and the matter was dropped. When the wedding day came, Misha showed up in this beautiful dress and with her boyfriend on her arm, who I'll admit is a very handsome guy. She also lost weight and has this haircut that suits her better, and I thought she looked great. We also found out throughout the night that her boyfriend is very successful and earns more than practically anyone else who attended. Throughout the reception, I noticed Jim glaring at Misha and her boyfriend the whole time. He was really cold and short towards her, when she came over to congratulate us and give us a gift. He was also straight up kind of rude to her boyfriend when Misha introduced us to him. When his mom mentioned that she was glad Misha found a great guy and praised her boyfriend for being so nice, Jim snapped that at least she won't be desperate and hung up on me for the rest of her life, which I thought was cruel and uncalled for, 
but I didn't challenge him because I didn't want to argue at my wedding, despite the fact that he frankly sounded bitter. The whole thing has left an awful taste in my mouth, and I can't help but think that Jim got jealous that Misha has found a guy who's honestly quite a catch, who she's clearly very in love with and is now completely over Jim. What's the most obnoxious attention-seeking behavior you've witnessed? I remember being on some Minecraft server with some friends when I was 15. Probably around 2 a.m. somehow the convo got deep and someone said something edgy like I know true pain. Now there's this girl in this group who always had to be the best or whatever. She tried to convince us that, at the young age of 15, she was becoming a doctor and was already in university at Oxford. She also called me stupid because I was not a doctor at 15, and couldn't learn an entire language overnight like she apparently could. I'm not joking. Once around 10 p.m. she said, I think I'm gonna learn another language. Swedish seems cool, and then claimed she was now fluent in it the next morning. Long story short, I already knew she was an attention seeker and didn't really like her because she tried to talk over everyone. Anyway, she sees this I know true pain message and takes that as an invitation to do her stuff. She goes, oh, you think you know true pain? And then goes on to describe in detail how her best friend had been hit by a car when they were six, and how she held her friend in her arms while waiting for help to arrive. She mentioned other random stuff like my mother passed from terminal illness or whatever. That part was true, but she milked it often. Then comes the grand slam. She says, I saw my uncle jump out of the Twin Towers on September 11th. I climbed into the wreckage and held up his pelvis bone. My mom took a picture of it. Now, it was at this moment that something seemed amiss. You see, I was older than her, and I even had no memory of that event. I was two years old at the time. This was the first piece of logic I pointed out against this statement. She replied with, I have picture-perfect memory, which I'm willing to maybe believe. My next question was, okay, but you must understand, the planes hit the towers pretty high up, how did you, an infant, comprehend the disaster, and then not only see, but recognize your uncle out of hundreds of jumpers falling from floors that were likely 80 to 100 stories up, she replied with something dumb, trying to move on with her sob story, but I'm on a roll, sleep deprived me continued, but let's say you somehow, maybe, one in a million noticed your uncle, and specifically your uncle, falling from the top of the burning building when you were an infant. Okay, sure. Unfortunately, you then claim to have, as an infant, slipped away from your family, passed the emergency services, and found your way to ground zero, where you then climbed onto the burning remains of the building and, in all 220 floors of destruction, found a pelvis bone that just so happened to belong to your uncle. More importantly, why did your mother see this and decide to take a picture? I don't remember much from that night, but that always stuck with me because being a 15 year old, she annoyed me with this, and this was me basically calling her a dummy. Also it's a fun story to share. Am I the pooper hatch for walking away from my wife and kids at Costco? So today I, wife and the kids went to Costco for some shopping. While we were strolling through the aisles, we got to the refrigerator section and my wife picked up a pack of frozen yogurt drinks. My little one, almost two, saw the yogurt drinks and raised her hand as in asking for some, to which my wife said that she was going to take one out and give it to her. My son, four, saw this and asked for one too, which my wife proceeded to do. The second I saw her do this, I told her to stop and to not give them the drinks as we haven't paid for them yet. She said no it's okay as we're going to pay for them anyway and I replied that if she does it I'm gonna leave her with the kids as that was really embarrassing in case someone called us out she didn't listen to me and did what she said she would do so I walked away from her leaving her with the kids and started looking at other things moments later she called me saying that I should go back as the kids had finished their drinks I was mad but I know how my kids are so I ended up going back when I went back we apologized to each other and kept going on with her day now we are home and she's acting rude to me and just told me that she thinks I don't care about her at all and I treat her like crap all on the basis of what happened earlier. So, am I the asshole for doing what I did, even though I gave her fair warning? A couple of reasons why I think it was right in doing what I did. Number one, as far as I know, it's illegal to open merchandise without paying for it, even though you're still at the store. It's also trashy and embarrassing to do that if people notice you doing it. Two, my kids are not easygoing, as in they don't take no easily. But I've been pretty good at teaching them their limits. Giving them stuff this easily only makes their problem worse. However, my kids do understand that you can't open anything in the store store until you're back home or in our car. I don't want them to think it's normal to just open and use store merchandise. Am I the dusty butthole for refusing to tell my husband the gender of our baby after he skipped going to the doctor's appointment with me? My husband and I are expecting. This is our first baby and we're excited. The thing is he barely attends any doctor's appointments with me and his excuses aren't even valid. He's willing to miss the doctor's appointment over soccer or a drink or board game with his friends. His response is always, I'm not the one carrying the baby. Why do I have to go see the doctor with you? Last week was my final straw. He was supposed to come with me for the baby's gender reveal appointment, but he chose not to come last minute because his friend invited him to fish and chips meal. I was pretty livid, but didn't make a fuss about it.
Mom went with me instead. He texted me asking me to tell him the results, boy or girl, but I refused to tell him. He kept spam calling me, but I hung up each time. He came home fuming, demanding I tell him the results, but I refused and bluntly told him since he refused to attend the appointment, then he gets no results till after the baby's born and said I was willing to die on this hill. He went off calling me spiteful and immature for doing this and punishing him. He said he's the father and he has the right to know. He then called me dramatic since I wasn't alone and mom was with me. I said he gets no results period. He's been fuming about it and told his family and now they're pressuring me to stop playing mind games with him and tell him, but I declined. Am I the asshole? Edit slash update. Hi, so first of all, wow, I did not expect this to blow up. Sorry, can't answer any comments because of feeling overwhelmed. I just wanted to mention that my husband just attempted to contact my doctor to get the results. It didn't go well and we had another argument over it. He couldn't get it since his mom was the one who made the call.